Hey all you splinterheads, welcome back. This is Bronze Dragon saying I appreciate your time. Thanks for tuning in. With that said, <clears throat> this episode is going to be about cards. <clears throat> a lot is said and it's kind of officially, unofficially uh, an extension or some question answers from uh, earlier, a few months ago, I was doing a Welcome to Splinterland series for new players. So the information I cover in this video is probably not going to be anything new for players that have been around for a while. But my main point of this video was that while I was doing those Welcome to Splinterlands videos, probably one of the biggest questions I got was, I'm new to Splinterlands, I want to buy some cards, but I don't want to waste money. What's the best value uh, to increase the strength of my deck? Now, this is a good question because if you've been with me for a while, you know that uh, quite a while ago I started off my videos by um, sh card shopping and expressing you know, my views on trying to get good deals and also at the same time increase the strength of my deck. <clears throat> so at this point, what I want to do is I want to for people who are newer to the game, I want to show you uh, how you can get into the game, increase your deck strength, and uh, buy some cards, but not spend a whole lot of money. Because I feel that most of the news around um, new cards and things like that in the game are very high-priced cards. And it can be very intimidating for a new player to be coming into a game and playing um, in bronze and then see all these news uh, the news uh, from the team saying oh here's a card to spend it's only eighty dollars a piece you need to buy twenty of them kind of intimidating right uh, and it could scare a lot of people off but I'm here to tell you that you can get into the game and through a combination of rentals and buys as well as playing um, and having your uh, daily chests so that you could possibly get some soulbound reward cards to also increase your strength. Um, in other words, you can get in and start buying some cards without spending a whole lot of money. And if you're relatively new, you've probably fished around in the card market and seen some of the cards I've talked about, but you may not have known their intrinsic value in play. So let's get into this uh, and let's talk about it. Um, because today we're not going to talk about expensive cards. We're going to talk about cheap cards, but cheap cards with good play value. So with that said, if you're on the market <clears throat> and you could go in game or you can go on uh, uh, peak monsters as well. But just for the sake of the card art and everything, we'll look at it in the in-game market. Um, and if you select the Chaos Legion set, and if you select rewards, what you're going to get <clears throat> is the last two previous sets, possibly three, I think last two previous sets before rewards cards became soul bound. At that point, you played, you got chests with cards in them, you got the cards, you could turn around and sell them, right? Um, and lots of farming bots did. And regular people bought and sold trade cards to increase their strength, make a little money. But the reason why they went uh, soul bound was the fact that they had these tons of farms, just farming these and um, putting thousands and thousands of these on the market, which drove the price down. Okay. So, <clears throat> but. What we're looking at today for you new players is that's a good thing because the price is low for these. But that doesn't mean that the play value is low. Okay, let's get into it. Let's start off with commons. Okay, so once you go into the reward set, stay on regular foil and then select common, you will see some of the cheapest cards, if not the cheapest cards in the game. But that doesn't mean that they're um, intrinsically bad to play. So the ones I want to look at right now have the name Pelicor on them. Pelicor Conjurer, Mercenary, Bandit, uh, Deceiver. Um, there's one for each splinter, right? Um, also, the Gargoyle Lion's not too bad in and of itself. 
Um, the vampire bat's not too bad uh, as well. Um, but what I want to say about these are that the Pelicor Mercenary, the Pelicor Bandit, and the Deceiver, uh, all of these are very strong play cards. Okay, Most of them are lower mana. Um, the Mercenary makes a good tank. They're all tanks, right? Well, the Bandit's not a tank. The Deceiver, um, the Mercenary, the Conjurer, um, and the Lion, they're really tanks or melee, right? But very strong for the value because you can look at these and they're all going for about a penny a piece, one US penny a piece, okay? So a couple of the newer ones, the Vampire Bat uh, is pretty good and Ever Hungry Skull, not too bad. Um, not so sure about the Murd Hampir and the Blood Maker. That doesn't make them bad, but I'm just uh, saying that the value is there. Pelicor Banda is one of my favorite cards out of the whole set, or that whole Chaos Legion, uh, well, the whole reward section of Chaos Legion. It's easily one of my favorite cards. And you can go into it and you can see that, let's see, it takes 400 copies to get a maximum level um, let's go over to Peak Monsters and check this out. Uh, I was just renting a card. Um, let's go buy. Let's go uh, rewards. Sorry. Uh, common. And look at Pelagor Bandit. Now, if you don't know how to do this, um, if you're looking for multiple copies, if you select bulk buy, Shout out to, uh, and I forget who it was, but one of my uh, subscribers pointed this out to me one time. You open up this window and put 400 in there, it automatically selects your best deal. So I can see that a combination of eight cards gets me a maximum level Pelicor Bandit for five bucks and 30 cents. Okay. Do you need to buy maximum level? Not necessarily, but I'm here to tell you that I believe that with land incoming and everything that's going to be soaking up cards, that at this point in time, uh, if you're going to buy these cards, you might as well just buy maximum level, be done with it, because it's there in your, in your set, you can use it, and it's always going to be there unless you sell it off in the future. Um, but I don't think the prices are going to stick around this long, because um, if you're not familiar, um, a lot of cards are going to be staked on land, so this will drive the price up. So anyway, I just wanted to point out that you can get a maximum level Pelicor Bandit, and this same argument applies to any of these for about five bucks, five bucks US, okay? So you may say, well, that's kind of expensive. You start looking at other cards, and the price quickly goes up, and the value is there on those cards because they're... Um, they're very easy to play and bring a lot of value to your deck. Okay, so let's say, uh, okay, so let's go back and let's switch over to rares. Um, so let's do rewards. Well, let's just go to the market. Chaos Legion rewards. Okay, and let's look at rare. Um, and I'm going to extrapolate and take this argument straight through each of the rarities, but I want to show you and I want to point out the value in the various cards. So what we've done is basically taken the, the same sets and we're looking at the rares available now. Now, here I can easily point out that the Venari Wavesmith and the Venari Crystal Smith, two of the probably the most placed, played cards out of this set and easy value for these, okay? So Exploding Rats is not too bad um, in its particular place. Uh, Volguin is one of the newer ones that if you sneak it into the back, like fifth slot or something like that, and it starts using that scavenger, it can get powerful really fast. Uh, Damfir Infiltrator is pretty nice as well. Um, Bonesmith, Basilisk, okay, not the top of my list. And I like Gargoyle Devil. Uh, it will fit into a mid-level mana match uh, where you're using range uh, towards the back. Um, it's hard to hit, 
Um, so it has good value. But I'm here to tell you that the WaveSmith and the Crystal Smith, very good value. So if we go into Crystal Smith, if you don't know, um, this is going to be range, but it also brings healing to your hand. Very instrumental. Okay, so if we go in here and we see that it takes 115 to get a max level. We go over to Peak Monsters. Let's switch over to Rares. And let's look at what 115 goes for. And we can see same difference. We can get a max level Crystal Smith for right around $5. Once again, my argument is, if you're going to buy, you might as well buy max level. You're getting a great deal on this, and it's just going to be part of your collection, and it's great. The Wavesmith is my other argument here. Um, this gives you a uh, shield. You know, uh, it will. It comes in handy. Um, has shield and dispel or protect rather it gives you plus two armor to all your characters so very handy in a magic hand right and you can see that uh, I keep going back um, once again uh, you can get a max level wave smith for just about five bucks right So you can see that they're right at about five cents a piece. Okay, so I would say that if you're going to get rares, go with a Wave Smith. Definitely go with a Crystal Smith, a Gargoyle Devil, and possibly a Volguine Infiltrator. Pretty good selection if your cards, if you've got the Summoner to support Dragon. Usually when people first start off, it takes a while to get into Dragon. So, but all very good uh, deals here. So uh, let's go on over to Epic. Same argument here. Uh, Jin Chwala, Jin Renova, Uraeus is easily one of my favorite cards. Um, Lava Launcher, Tidebiter, not so much Revealer, not that he's bad, but I find strong value in Jin Chwala, Jin Renova, and Uraeus. The others are kind of arguably arguable. Lava Launcher is great in the rule set where uh, tank, where range can be used in front. He can be used in front anyway, but it's great in that kind of rule set. Um, he's got good armor. Um, so uh, Uraeus, stick him in, in the middle somewhere, has that sneak attack. Jin Renova with life. You back that up with the healing card we just talked about in range, and she adds uh, the strength to all the monsters. Um, and uh, Jin Chwala has the thorns right up front. Great tanking power. Sometimes Jin Chwala can win a match by itself, right? So let's go in and look at that. And you can see, let's go over to Peak Monsters and switch over to Epic and look at Jin Chwala. Okay, so for Epic, you need 46 to get a max level. Seven bucks. So we've went max level common, max level rare for right in the $5 range. Max level Epic for 46, or some, sorry, uh, for uh, right at $7. So not too much of an increase. You got a max level card there. And not just a max level card, you've got a max level epic. So, um, like I said, these three cards here, very good cards to add to your, your hand. Tidebiter's pretty good too. Lava Land Launcher once in a while comes in handy, but I wouldn't argue with any of these, right? So all of these are going to bring good value to your deck right at about 15 cents a piece. And even less if you can find a deal on a max level. I can't tell you how many times I've won just because Uraeus with that sneak attack, right? So uh, let's go back and uh, finish this um, little talk off by looking at the legendaries. Now, they're legendary for a reason. They're great cards, right? Harclaw, Jin Bilka, one of my favorite cards, Jin O'Shaughness. I mean, I can tell you how popular he is, or how much I liked him, 
even way back when he first came out and I was still playing Alric with Magic, I bought him when he first came out for $25. I bought multiple BCX of him for between $15 and $25 a piece before the price started going down. The price started going down because of more and more and more got on the market, right? Doesn't mean he's a bad card. In fact, he's excellent, right? So you go in here and you start looking at what he picks up. You know, as he levels up, he has the void, he has the phase, he has force field. He's a great tank. First or second position, great. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I keep going to the wrong one. Uh, Jared Scar is pretty good. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of great luck with him, but Harclaw is great. Jin Bilka in the, in, um, is great supporting uh, in a uh, green magic hand. Uh, Venator Kinjo, also very good, sitting back in the fourth or fifth slot back there um, as a support card. And also, I, I got to love Countess Sinash. Um, and Countess Sinash, uh, let's look at the stats there. Um, anywhere where you can pick up speed is going to be a good card. And she comes in and very handy in Splinter Forge as well if you play Splinter Forge. But either way, we can go ahead and look at, at these deals. Um, not very much money. Let's go back over to Peak Monsters. So uh, you can pick up a, a Jin O'Shaughness and... It takes 11 to get a max card. $13.20. So that is uh, roughly twice roughly twice as much as the others, a little bit more, right? But you're talking about a legendary card here, right? So I would say, you know, uh, of this set, I would say the must-haves are Jin O'Shaughness, Venator Kinjo, Jin Bilka, um, Harclaw is arguable, Countess Sinash is a very good card, it's arguable depending upon if you play fire a lot. Um, but my main point is these are some of the cheapest cards for their rarities in the game, okay? But they offer very good strength to your, hand, uh, to your deck and they offer a lot of value, okay? so. Uh, in his videos, Dwayne um, talks about a lot price versus or cost versus value, right? Low cost, high value here. So I just wanted to put this on the table. Uh, I know this is probably nothing new to those that have been around for a while, but I wanted to bring it out and, and make very specific pointed comment towards new players because people were asking me, hey, you know, uh, wh what should I buy? And none of this is considered investment advice. Do I think they will go up in the future? Yes, I do. It's the law of decreasing numbers, right? As we go along, people combine them. There are fewer and fewer and fewer. So you buy a one cent card, it does not take too much for it to become a 10 cent card. Um, and that's 10 times your value, right? It takes, it's a lot harder to buy a $10 card and have it go to $100, right? But I'm not really talking about that. Do I think they'll go up? Yes. But I'm talking about increasing the strength of your deck so you can win more, get out of bronze, get into silver, possibly get into gold, rake in those chests so on a daily basis so you can continue to improve your hand, your deck, uh, with those Soulbound reward cards. So with that said, this has been Bronze Dragon. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, glad you stopped by. If you find this information valuable, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I hope everyone out there is happy and healthy in your family, and I will see you on the flip side.